In this video, I want to talk about the difference between econometrics and hard science. And by science, I mean sort of physics, chemistry, biology, and perhaps also sort of by extension, mathematics. So the idea in science is that we might be interested in finding out, does something A, some event A, cause an event B to occur? So an example which might come about in chemistry might be, does, let's say, some sort of substance, whatever that substance might be, does that cause, let's say, CO2 gas to be um, produced when we put that particular substance into water? So the idea here is that in science, what we would do is we would create one test tube which we would label the experiment and another test tube which we would label the control. And within the sort of experimental test tube, we would have our water, but we would also put our substance of interest. Whereas in the control experiment, we would just put water, let's say. And then what we might do is we might then sort of measure if any CO2 was produced in both of these test tubes. And by comparing the experiment with the control, we would be able to ascertain whether or not this particular substance was causing CO2 to be produced. And we know that this is a causal relationship because there's no other sort of possible explanation for this other than something to do with the substance which we put into the test tube. So if we contrast this with the situation of econometrics, we find that in econometrics, we actually can't carry out these sort of very regimented and sort of experimentally correct experimental conditions. So an example of a relationship we might be interested in in econometrics might be what is the effect of military participation? So whether an individual goes into the military, what's the effect which that has on an individual's lifetime income? And a sort of one particular theory here is that participation in the military has various psychological effects on individuals which actually reduce their earnings capability when they come out of the military. So the idea here, if we were to actually construct an experiment here, would be that we would take our sort of individual, our representative individual, and at the beginning of life, we would actually clone them. So this you can kind of think about as an identical twin, but it's actually even more identical than an identical twin. We actually want to sort of be considering the exact same person because we all know that there are differences between identical twins. They're not exactly the same person. So person, let's say one here, we would then send into the military. Whereas person two would remain a civilian. And then the idea would be that we would compare for these individuals, we would compare the lifetime income of those that went into the military with the lifetime income of an individual that remained a civilian. And by comparing these two things, we would be comparing sort of apples with apples because we'd actually be dealing with the same person. So we would then be able to sort of make some sort of statement about the causal effect of military participation on lifetime income. Another thing we'd have to do really is we'd have to repeat this experiment a large number of times, sort of so such that we got reliable results. But in general, in econometrics, aside from the sort of <laughs> the fact that this is completely morally unacceptable, it's not actually possible to carry out such experiments. So we actually have to deal with non-experimental data. So the example here might be that we have the lifetime income for a sort of range of individuals. So individuals one, two, three, four, and sort of so on. So we have a large number of individuals and we have whether or not that individual actually went into the military. So perhaps if I illustrate by crosses or red crosses, individuals that go into the military, we might sort of have this relationship here. So we have all these sort of lifetime incomes for individuals that went into the military. Whereas we might indicate by blue circles or sort of purple circles, all those individuals that didn't go into the military. So perhaps our sort of data looks something like this. So the circles represent individuals that remain civilians. So from this data set, we could sort of look at what the average lifetime earnings is for those individuals that remain civilians and compare that with the sort of average 
lifetime earnings for those individuals that went into the military. And at sort of first glance here, you might think that this sort of difference here, if I draw that in a different colour so it's a bit more distinctive, this difference in the sort of averages, you might think as being the causal effect of military participation on lifetime income. But in fact, if you were to assume that, you would actually be wrong because there's actually another effect which is also at play. Namely that individuals that go into the military actually have a lower lifetime earnings capability to begin with. So there's, there is this sort of reverse causal effect which is also at play. And you can sort of think about this as for a number of reasons. Perhaps the individuals that go into the military aren't so interested in money, perhaps they're interested in, in serving sort of country. Perhaps the individuals which go into the military don't really enjoy sort of academic work, so they prefer to be out in the sort of field and, and sort of doing things with their hand. And also that might sort of, you might sort of expect for those group of individuals, they would have a lower lifetime earnings capability as well. So there is this sort of reverse causal effect on sort of military participation, namely that individuals with lower lifetime earnings capability tend to go into the military as well. So this actually confounds our situation because of the fact that these differences between lifetimes earnings of civilians and military um, personnel are actually composed of two effects. One of them is the sort of in, uh, effect which we're interested in, which I call the sort of causal effect. And the other one is this sort of reverse causal effect, which is also happening. And the, these are the sort of problems which are endemic in non-experimental data. And econometrics is about finding out ways that we can actually still estimate this causal relationship, given that we only have non-experimental data. And I'm actually going to talk about in the next video how we can actually look towards sort of natural experiments, which will actually allow us to evaluate this causal effect. I hope to see you in the next video.